Mike Bond here with coach John Cavanaugh, UAE Warriors. John just had a uh, nice win there. Tell us how it all went down. Yeah, um, it's fight week for Johnny Walker, but it's yeah, also yeah. fight day for his teammate Walter. So it just worked out well. I landed yesterday and the, uh, I was able to come along and corner him. Um, he fought a bit of a local hero there. You got it, you got it, his, his opponent got a good pop. But uh, thankfully it went their way. Walter landed a heavy shot. We knew we had to be cagey at the start. The guy is, has good, uh, kind of an orthodox striking, but uh, Walter's very heavy hands, as we've seen. And um, <laughs> it was actually funny because he had, a, excuse my pronunciation, Hezbollah yeah. on, on his T-shirt. Yeah. And then as he's leaving the cagey season, and he's, he's like a small child backstage there. I've never seen somebody as happy. Uh, all his birthdays and Christmases came together. He's much more excited he got to meet him than he is that he got a, a good victory. That's hilarious. And yeah, you mentioned Johnny Walker, obviously a huge fight for him at UFC 294. Uh, I know at the very beginning when he moved to the gym, maybe a little stumble, but it seems like you guys have found your groove. You found what you need out of him. This is a big test against Mega Man and Kaliyev, who a lot of people thought could have been the champion back in December. So when you got this fight, what did you relish out of this challenge? Um, yeah, I mean, bar two small errors, the guy could be 20 and 0 right now. He's he's a phenomenal fighter. I think probably the, maybe the most technical striker in the light heavyweight division. Um, I was sure, like we were sort of half promised that if we won the last one, we uh, we get a title fight. Didn't work out that way, but I'm sure a victory um, here would mean a would mean a title fight next year. So it's it's huge. It's a very difficult test. Southpaw, uh, very good counter striker, but uh, somewhat serendipitously, the last two years, Walker's main sparring partner has been a heavyweight Southpaw boxer. Very good, Thomas Carty back home, and uh, he's a phenomenal uh, Southpaw boxer. So we have had a, a good while to get ready for this. We've prepared for Hill, and it seems like we just got a lot of Southpaws in a row. So we had had preparation for it. It's going to be a very tough fight, but um, obviously. My prediction would be Walker gets the win and uh, we, we work our way towards the belt next year. Are you guys preparing for maybe a slightly different ankle live? Because he got some criticism even from like the UFC brass after the last fight. And he said, I'm going to take all this time off. I'm going to come back and be this exciting fighter, this different guy. Do you think he might try to go outside himself a little more? Or do you think at the end of the day, when trouble strikes in the octagon, he reverts back to his old instincts? Uh, yeah, I don't know much about his amateur sporting career. He looks like a, a very well-trained amateur boxer to me and, and the southpaw style that's the way those guys uh, kind of r the russian style of boxing um so i'm not sure if that's true maybe he's a wrestler maybe i have that completely wrong um but it's very hard to go against decades of of uh of how you train um so is he going to be a bit more you know a bit more pressing the action maybe but he is i think he's best when he's um counter striking but uh yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. He is a year out. He was active. He is a year out. Johnny's had a couple this year. So is he going to charge at us and try to wrestle the whole time? Looking at Johnny's previous fights or, or does he want to uh, look for the knockout? It's You, you, you never really know. So um, let's find out Saturday, eh? Yeah. It's obviously high stakes. As we know, there's a title fight coming up too in that division. Uh, but did want to ask you, you're here. You have younger fighters on this card. Obviously a bigger name in Johnny. But back home in Ireland, especially... Uh, in you know some of these Europe shows, Bellator has been a huge presence for your guys' gym. Lots of fighters on those cards, lots of opportunities for your younger guys to get experience. With all these rumors going on, actually, they just announced uh, Viacom not that long ago that they are going to be ending MMA and boxing content at the end of this year. So I guess your disappointment maybe in not having that home to give a foundation for your fighters to get experience. Yeah, it was, it was a good thing while well, it lasted. We had uh, two big shows in Ireland for the last couple of years. And then I had a bunch of guys fighting around Europe and the States with them. Um, it was a great, uh, a great show. I, I love. It's like a little family that runs that runs Bellator. Very tight group. Um, but there's only one thing constant in this life, and that's change. And now we have PFL coming along. So PFL now is in Dublin in a couple of weeks in December. I've got uh, two guys, well, a guy and a girl, um, in the hundred grand uh, tournament. So fingers crossed, we get a good, get some good results there. And then, and who knows, uh, PFL, I think they'll be pleasantly surprised when they see what a Dublin crowd is like and maybe they want to keep up the, uh, keep up their tradition and, uh, you know, they are really going for it with PFL Europe, a, a European league, which has been criminally missing for a long time, you know, but, um, so yeah, look, that's what I've learned about this game is that you can't get too used to anything, don't, don't get upset when there's, when something seems, 
it seems to knock me on a different path and we were still we still get some success out of it so we, uh, we're not going anywhere. Yeah, fair enough and then of course I have to ask you about Conor McGregor I know the past couple of years a lot of speculation about his return big step this past week officially in the USADA pool I uh, don't have to go into all the drama of what's being said here and there but just to have this hurdle behind you I guess give us an update on him how much is he training how focused is he uh, tell us the latest on Conor McGregor. Yeah, just today, actually, um, I was just sending him a, a message. I'm, I'm here, and you sent me a message back on the mats, uh, rolling with a, with a black belt where he is now. I guess I can't even say what country he's in at this stage. <laughs> you still don't know where he is. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, he's training away, very hungry, and uh, looking forward to return next year, whenever that date is. Whether it's, um, I guess it's, it's, it's well, I don't, I don't know when it is. Well, I, I'm always wary when you ask questions about Connor. But, gets pulled out of, uh, out of context and the headlines, so I don't know where or when it is, but uh, I am looking forward to that inevitable return. How much focus has there been on Michael Chan? Like, in his mind, and your mind, is that the opponent, regardless of date, that it's going to be? Yeah, in a nutshell, yes. Um, the sparring we have been doing and, and the training that we have done to date has been with that style in mind, which is, which is to be honest, is Connor, somewhat Connor's bread and butter. Uh, Chandler's an absolute warrior comes forward, throws big bombs, kind of a powerful uh, wrestling style. And, uh, you know, I, I've said it already in interviews, it, it does remind me a little bit of, of the Mendes fight, uh, but up a couple of weight classes this time. Um, so I'm, uh, we're, 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 both, we're all relishing the, the idea of that challenge. Yeah, and what do you think like his motivation going forward is? I know he wants to make this comeback. His team have touted the biggest comeback in combat sports history. Um, in his, your mind, his mind, what does that mean? What do you need to accomplish in order for that to be what, what it's kind of framed as? Uh, what's his motivation at this stage? Well, I guess you'd have to ask him, but it's, def it's, de it's definitely something I've wondered about. Because when you've won the belts and you've gotten all the money, like what is it that keeps you coming back? And there's only one thing that makes sense to me, and if you can tell me something else, I'd love to hear it. You just love it. You just really enjoy it. And uh, you know, if, if you take away somebody's, let's say, financial motivation for doing something, you really learn what they want to do. He didn't go off and pick up golf. He didn't start doing fishing. He's not someone to go on six month type holidays. Wherever he goes, there's a gym with him. Wherever he goes, there's trainers, there's nutritionists. That's just been since, since the leg break. Nothing has changed since then. And uh, for now, when, when I'm chatting to him, and I sometimes will throw a question out, nothing to do with fighting, about whatever. Whatever's going on in the world, or a uh, different sport, or a business. Within two messages, it's back to like, well, what do you think of this technique? What do you think of that technique? It's the same 17-year-old that walked in my gym and just bugged me 24-7 with curiosity and questions about the sport. That's not gone away at all. Today, just sending me a video of him rolling. Uh, what do you think of that? What do you think of this? So, the only thing that makes sense to me is that he absolutely loves the sport. And um, his body's in good shape, he's in good shape physically, mentally. He of course has no like some financial restraints other people have with regards to best care, the best training and everything else. So um, yeah, I think next year is going to be a really big year for Connor actually. Yeah. Uh, Hunter Campbell, when he did that press conference, was very adamant that USADA and outside things have done a lot of damage to his brand with some of the comments that they made. Uh, do you feel like that's a fair assessment of how the past you know, few months especially have played out? Yeah, I just didn't really understand it. Like he's, he's in the pool and from that date was six months, which is when the fight was talked about. All good. And then the next thing is a headline about them. They're trying to get it, they're trying to fight sooner than that. Not, not as far as I was told, we were told. Okay, fast forward six months from that date. Okay, John, start thinking that date, that's when it's going to be. Oh, great, that, that sounds good, you know, start working towards that. And then they come out with like, yeah, but what if he does fight? Well, would you not wait till then? Would you not wait till the UFC announces him fighting in February, which will be against the rules, yeah. and then say, Oh, why did you do something special for him? We, we, no one was asked for any special dates. No special dates were announced. And you go on this weird... Um, I actually thought, when I seen the boss man, Dana, saying he went on a bit of a Britney Spears... Or what was it? Uh, he went full on Britney Spears. Yeah, Travis Tiger, the uh, CEO of USADA. Yeah. I actually was more... Yeah, maybe I wasn't thinking of that. But, but um, I just thought it was a very unusual... Those guys are so measured. You know, and especially you Americans, you're so litigious. Like it's, I'm very surprised he would start guessing what they were going to do. Maybe he just felt very hurt that the UFC had decided to go with a different company. It's not like they're not doing testing, they're just using a different company for whatever reason. You, you, above you and I, uh, our, our pay grade, 
I don't know why they switched. Um, uh, but CTV, that led to them saying, oh, you're doing that because we're trying to read your mind. That just made no sense. At least, at least wait for them to try and announce a fight within the six-month timeline, which there won't be, yeah. and then say something. But anyway, yeah. well, we're all excited for it. Actually, last thing I did want to ask you. Um, I know he's not full on your gym, but Dylan Dennis has been associated in the past. We saw his comeback to combat sports. Uh, just curious for you, what do you want to see him do next? Do you want to see him box again against you know in this world? Would you like to see him you know come back to maybe the gym and train for an MMA fight? What would you like to see Dylan Dennis do next? <laughs> uh, I say this with, with nothing but love for Dylan, he knows I love him. I'd love to see him just um, put the phone down for a minute and, uh, and come back to Dublin. I've been torturing him to come over to Dublin. I know he just had a, a wee baby and, and we're all excited about that. But I, I'd love to, see him, um, I'd love to see him come to Dublin again and, and, and just throw himself into training for, for mixed martial arts. He's an MMA fighter, he's not a boxer, he's an MMA fighter. Uh, it, it, and exceptional when you see him in the gym. I mean, the guy, he's never quite realized and he's been very unlucky with a, with a set of injuries and, and this and that. Um, I hope he got some good money out of boxing and put that, in a, put that in a trust fund for the kid. Don't be buying fancy shoes or anything like that. And uh, yeah, get, get, get back to, to my gym or another gym, wherever. Get the head down and, um, and, and show everybody what you can do in the cage. Sage advice. I like it, Dylan. I know you're watching. I know you're listening. Uh, John, appreciate the time. Congratulations on the win tonight. Best of luck Saturday, and uh, great to see you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that.